Um, I'll, I'll be sharing a screen soon. Um, I'd like to begin by just introducing you to the Economist group first, then delving into the Economist Intelligence Unit and then the graduate program and opening it up to questions. As always, I'd really like to keep the session as interactive as possible. Um, so please have your questions ready. Uh, I'll just go ahead and share screens now and share my brief presentation with you. Uh, is my screen visible to everyone? Yeah, it is visible. Great, thank you. Um, oh, sorry, just one second. Uh, slight hitch. Uh, sorry, could I just have a moment, please? Of course. Right, getting back into sharing again. Sorry about that slight internet problem at my face. Um, so, as Mayuri mentioned, we uh, are from the Economist Group. Um, to clarify, most people refer to it as a magazine, uh, whereas we write it and see it as a newspaper, uh, which is why I've shared an image of the very first one with you, which was uh, launched in 80, 1843. Uh, some of you may know that The Economist also has a magazine separate to this one, which uh, features longer pieces uh, called 1843. Uh, very in Interesting, I would encourage you all to check it out because uh, if you're looking for that sort of long format analysis, um, not just about business, but also lifestyle related things, quite an interesting piece, completely online now um, after the pandemic in keeping with the times. Um, the most important thing to note here is the date 1843 because uh, this is what launched uh, the Economist newspaper and now the group. The idea behind it being that when protectionist laws were introduced in Britain, um, the founder wanted to launch uh, a newsletter at the time which promoted free trade um, and also minimal um, interference from the government. Um, it was all about free speech and it's something that we carry forward with our economist mission statement as well. Um, basically, the idea is to take part in a severe contest which is intelligent. Um, but we also really value what contemporary politics might view as unworthy, timid ignorance, uh, obstructing progress, because if you don't question what's around you, you're not able to gauge opportunity. So the idea is to be as analytical as possible and as free with it as you can be. Uh, just very briefly about the Economist Group, uh, we have about 27 offices uh, and journalists all across the world. The Cabot Square office, which is our office in London, is definitely the headquarters. However, we are growing into all other regions of the world. Um, the Gurgaon office, which some of your um, previous um, seniors, I guess, uh, came down to last year, is actually our second largest office now. And we've grown from about 30 people in 2015 to about 150 above now. Um, and we're hoping some more of you will join us soon uh, in the many teams here. Um, I just wanted to share some stats uh, regarding our outreach, our circulation, um, our monthly clicks, et cetera. I've left this up here. I'd be happy to share this with you. Uh, I'm not going to bore you by reading out every single digit um, available here. Um, moving on, I would like to actually speak about the Economist Intelligence Unit, which is the region, reason why I'm here today. Um, the Economist Intelligence Unit is a sister company of the Economist um, newspaper. We were formed as very much a background to the newspaper to help with um, data and to provide research and to fact check. However, since then, we have grown into a company very much on our own. Uh, and we have a whole set of products which are completely separate to the newspaper. 
uh, one thing to keep in mind is that everything at The Economist, whether you fall under The Economist Intelligence Unit or the EIU, as we call it, banner, or the um, Economist Media Services banner or the Economist Healthcare banner, the work is always collaborative. So we don't function in silos. We make sure that whatever data, research, et cetera, we're doing is available to our peers in the other groups as well. Uh, on its own, the EIU is a research and analysis division. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a sister company to The Economist newspaper. However, we on our own have been around for 70 years. So that's 70 years of experience that we're carrying forward. The main purpose of the EIU is to help um, businesses, financial firms, governments, um, academic bodies to keep track of a world that is forever in flux. As I mentioned, when The Economist newspaper was formed, it was to keep track and question and analyze the flux. The EIU very much follows the same mission statement as well. The flux is what allows for opportunities. The opportunities need to be managed. The EIU provides the essential tools that are necessary for this. Essentially, what all of it drills down to us uh, for it is risk management. Um, this is not to be confused with one of our products, which is called risk briefing, because I know that one specifically uses the word risk. But what I'm trying to say is that essentially all of these products, which I'll be speaking about now in a little bit of detail, um, are essentially measuring risk. However, they may be doing it via just data, via just infographics, or they're doing it via the editorial aspect, which is the written um, analysis pieces or white papers or the webinars that we create or the client specific consulting work that we do. Uh, we're intensely global in approach with the EIU as well. Uh, the EIU services about clients through 24 offices, and we have a staff that speaks about over 25 languages in house. Um, all our products are available on the EIU store. I would strongly encourage all of you to go on to EIU.com um, if you're interested. Um, there are sample reports, et cetera, available. Um, there's also the careers page, um, which has not just openings regarding the graduate program that I'm running or the industry team that I manage, but it also has openings for the other products amongst our sister companies as well, uh, all of which are very worthy of uh, the interest. Um, Forever growing, the office really does provide a lot of um, learning opportunities. Um, in addition to just the products, which I will speak about now, I just want to also highlight the kind of activities that the EIU has in-house, which include um, the Economist Group Women, uh, the Economist Group Environment Sustainability Groups, um, our group speaking out for mental health, um, and we really do encourage a flat structure uh, of working, which is how we prefer to work in a collaborative manner. Um, moving on, I'll be speaking a bit about the graduate program, which I run. We had the first iteration of this last year, which uh, three of your peers joined. All three have successfully been absorbed into two different teams. Uh, one of them happily is my own, the industry briefing team. Um, the graduate program basically aims to provide the next potential crop of graduate research analysts or graduate data analysts. For those of you who have been in touch with us over the previous year or your seniors perhaps, uh, you may notice that the split is new. What happened here is that we are taking feedback from the previous batch and from the managers uh, about how it went. And we realized that uh, to keep in tandem with our business needs, we really needed more focus on the roles. Um, so we're going to be maintaining a rotationary method as we did in the last one, um, i.e. you function within each team for a particular amount of time and then you move on and you're trained up on that next product. But uh, I'm going to just make this very simple here. The graduate research analysts for us are going to be an editorial function. The graduate data analysts, as the name suggests, are going to be more data oriented. Um, they would be supporting more forecasting, statistical modeling, data scoping tasks. That's very much a part of our editorial GRA rotation as well. However, the editorial one also expects you to come with um, confident writing skills, being able to take feedback, write webinars, make PowerPoint decks, um, and be able to perform in a more impact-driven editorial capacity as such. 
Uh, I'd like to take you through the products that are falling under these. This will give you not just an introduction to what's in the graduate program, but also what's available in India via the Economist uh, Intelligence Unit here. Uh, this is a basic screenshot of our economics unit data tool, which can be found on eiu.com. Um, I'm happy to announce that this is actually going to be a dated look soon because we're going to move on to a new platform uh, very soon. It's been in development for a while now and we're going to migrate soon. So it's going to look better <laughs> than this. However, the idea of showing you these indicators is um, basically to encompass what the economics unit does. Um, basically, the economics unit is a group of macroeconomists sitting within the Gurgaon office, largely. We are also based uh, in Singapore, Hong Kong, US, and the Cabot Square London office. Um, the team is a backbone for all our other products because they curate the data, they help us forecast, they help uh, um, create models uh, so that we can actually use the data to create analysis pieces, to create client-specific content, um, to create forward-looking impact-driven um, written pieces for um, our subscriptions products as well. Um, the EIU Healthcare, which will also come under the GDA Graduate Data Analyst format for us, is all, uh, going to soon be called Clear State. Um, you might notice the difference on the site if you happen to go there. However, it's EIU Healthcare right now. Um, as mentioned, this is a consulting um, vertical for us. So the company really focuses on client needs, on um, med tech, uh, IVD, surgicals, et cetera. Um, and they are very client based. So this is not really a product that's working uh, on specific reports and analysis pieces every single month. This is one wherein we acquire clients, you interact with the clients, you build something that is specific to their needs. Uh, I'll be sharing some of our clients at the end of the um, presentation as well, so that it becomes a little bit more clear. But these are the two verticals within EIU Healthcare Clear State. We have our in vitro diagnostics uh, gateway. We have the gateway uh, and surgical gateway. Um, the other vertical is our med tech and life sciences practices. These are more bespoke market intelligence uh, products. All of the EIU healthcare clear state products will be quant based. They require smart work. Basically, you need to have an analytical bent of mind to be able to do a lot of data scoping work and present it to a client in a manner in which they can use so that they know where to invest, where to grow. With the pandemic, we've seen a great amount of growth with this product. As you can imagine, healthcare was booming this year and forward-looking um, information is what most companies were looking out for, most businesses. Uh, I'm now moving into the arena of graduate research analysts. This is the country analysis uh, page for us. Um, this is one of our flagship products. Country analysis basically uh, prepares you with forecast for the next five years um, on anything related to that country. So under this banner, we will have country reports, country risk reports, country financial reports, um, business reports, so you know where to invest and where not to invest and why. Everything is based on the data provided to us from the uh, economics uh, unit, which I presented on earlier. Um, everything is based on models formed by the Economist Intelligence Unit. Falling under the same GRA banner and subscriptions banner for us, because this is also an editorial project, is the industry briefing um, services. Uh, we cover six industries, as you can see, automotive, consumer, energy, financial, healthcare, telecommunications. Um, we are looking to grow this product massively over the coming year or so. We are looking to um, include more geographies, to include um, more industries uh, and more diversity with the product in terms of how it is. I myself joined this product in 2015, and we used to be limited to nothing but long format reports, um, which I will explain in a bit. However, we've grown into also writing analysis pieces, what we call updaters, which are quick to 5,500 word informational pieces, um, white papers, webinars, a lot of media activity, um, and a lot of PR activity as well. Um, 
the industry and the um, country analysis products basically, as I said, will work with the econ econ sorry, uh, economics unit data. While the economics you know, unit will provide data at the country level, industry briefing will use that same data to drill it down to industry level to provide you with forecasts. So just like country analysis, uh, we also provide five-year forecasts, uh, except for financial services and energy, which provide you 10-year forecasts. Um, industry briefing covers up to 72 markets. Uh, our data for all our products, country analysis, economics, um, healthcare, et cetera, et cetera, dates all the way back to 1990. Uh, and this is important because we keep and provide an archive of it to our clients, uh, which provides greater scope for analysis. So you can go back, download that through the data tool that I just showed to you, um, a brief screenshot of. And you can actually keep it in an Excel on with yourself or keep coming back to the site. Um, and it provides more granularity to the analysis that you're providing because you can keep going back and seeing what happened, how political events affected uh, each year, what our forecast was and why, et cetera. Um, these services also include market outlooks, which explain uh, industry and country forecasts and analyze wider business environments in each country. Um, we have regular reports, um, which can be annual, biannual, or semi-annual um, for or quarterly, sorry, um, for each industry and for each country. We also have global and regional outlooks, which come out on a subscription um, schedule for us. Um, news and analysis pieces, of course, are a part of the work as well. Um, the idea with all the products is to give a clear outlook of market conditions so that a client knows where to invest or not, or an academic can uh, provide analysis. Um, just to be a little bit more granular with that, typical users of the editorial subscriptions products, which come under graduate research and list with my program, are country managers who want to know about local conditions or um, regional managers to validate information from subsidiaries or individuals working on corporate investment strategies um, who may be looking for market entry um, verticals. Um, the services will help pinpoint legislation, um, trends, which one might want to look out for. Um, and as I said, there's a market outlook available. Um, depending on your bent of mind, you can find any of these facets through the products which I mentioned as under the GDA verticals, Economist Units, EIU Healthcare, or the ones that are coming under the GRA vertical, which would be more writing editorially inclined, country analysis, industry briefing. Uh, quickly ending with, these are some of our clients uh, that we work with quite frequently. Um, we work with a lot of um, industry country specific organizations, a lot of national organizations, um, a lot of um, research and development uh, departments within other um, competitor companies as well. And that in a nutshell is the Economist, the Economist Intelligence Unit and the graduate program. I'd like to open it up to questions now. I, if I've been rather fast, <laughs> I apologize for that, but please uh, make me repeat whatever you need me to repeat. Any questions about the graduate program or just the company or any other positions? Oh, okay, their hands are raised. Um, Adi Raj, first on my screen. Um, hi, am I audible? Yeah, you are. Yeah, uh, hi, thanks Shata, for your time today. Um, I was just uh, curious more about, um, so basically so since data asset is at the core of what EIU does, um, sort of in a day-to-day -day exercise, uh, working on data, what sort of, um, sort of software and tools uh, are the ones that are most utilized on a day-to-day -day basis uh, working at EIU? Um, so that depends on the vertical that you apply for and end up in. Um, if you're going for the more data-oriented one, they will look for visual basic skills in Python, et cetera, because you'll be working on more quant-based um, skills. Um, 
the, those are just two I'm mentioning off the top of my head. Of course, they need uh, excellent Excel skills, et cetera, as well. If you're working more on the editorial side, the way I do, uh, it's really more of having a little bit of an economics background so that you're able to make connections um, map between the macroeconomic and the political uh, and provide an analysis. Um, and basically, you have an in-house training on our workbooks, which the economics team develops for us. Uh, Does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, can I can I just ask a follow up if that's okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah uh, so uh, you mentioned that basically since, um, since last year you've sort of uh, bifurcated your verticals and you have the GRA and the GDA. So um, in the application process when yeah. we do apply for uh, EIU, uh, do we sort of apply for one vertical or is this we apply all together and then we you know, serve rotations in both? Because you said we serve, serve rotations in both, but I was wondering that do we apply to both as well or do we apply to just one? Uh, no, so let me clarify that. Uh, the idea this time is that you don't rotate between both. So you either apply for GDA, uh, graduate right. data analyst, or graduate research analyst, um, yeah. because we realize that that allows us to give you more time in each product. What was happening last time was that we had people going through the data products and the editorial products, and we felt like they needed more time um, right. to be able to use the training that they got. So it's going to be either or, however, both verticals fall under the graduate program. So I'll still be having regular general training sessions, which are relevant to both verticals, but it has to be either or. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I, I sort of have, I must have missed that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Nidhi, can you, um, is, Nidhi, are you there? Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to ask, is there an age limit for the graduate program that you're looking at? I'm sorry, did you ask about an age limit? Yeah. Uh, do you require the candidates to be of a certain age? Is there an age requirement or a range that you consider? Uh, no, not really. I mean, we wouldn't be looking at anybody fresh out of school or anything, but no, as no, long I'm as you have at the, uh, more, the education uh, requirements. Uh, no, I was looking at somebody a little more senior in age. Is there a cap on? Um... No, 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 not at all. No, not at all. We're, so you, we're looking it doesn't for matter. skill. We're looking for. No, no, no. Okay. As okay. long as the test is good, as long as the interview is good, there's a willingness to take feedback and learn from it. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Rishabh, can you go next? Yeah, hi Shweta, and thank you for your presentation. Hi. This might be similar to what Adhiraj and Nidhi have asked, but I, my question was, what are the eligibility requirements for this program? And uh, how, what's the selection procedure for this? Okay, so the eligibility requirements, um, I'll mention it, but also please do go through them at the end of the job descriptions because I've put it there in detail. Um, we are looking for some economics background be it in the form of a course, a diploma, uh, a um, graduation, or a post-graduation. But we need some understanding of economic concepts this time. Um, so we will be looking at that because the tests are going to definitely be testing you out on that, assessing that. Um, apart from that, we are looking for um, being able to write well, communicate well, having a certain level of presentation skill, um, we're not targeting people with courses. We haven't done that last year either. The EIU really goes out um, with testing a person's skill at that given time, given point in time, um, because we understand that if you're an English lit graduate, doesn't mean that you can't learn how to write a database story. Um, however, we do know that economics background is required to be able to perform the analysis. Uh, to provide the clarity required uh, to our clients and our subscribers. So econ is definitely going to be the one thing that's going to be consistent for the data analysts and for the um, editorial research analysts. Um, the rest is going to be just your general. Uh, there's going to be a G, uh, GPA level, which uh, our HR team will provide to you, uh, because I think each college also measures it in a different manner a little bit. Um, but other than that, your normal graduation, post-graduation will work. 
Right. What was and your second question? Sorry. The selection yeah. procedure. I mean, what sort of application process? Right. Uh, so it's a little simpler, unfortunately, thanks to the pandemic this time. Uh, we had a really, really uh, lengthy selection process in office last year because what we like doing is having everyone come in meet everyone in office and interact with the space, et cetera. We're unable to do that due to the pandemic this time. So uh, we're going to limit it to test and interview. Uh, it's gonna be online this time, but there will be a panel interview uh, if you make it through the test round. And what so does it's the gonna test be CV school. Include? Sorry. What does this um, test that, entail? So that'll be different. If you're applying for the data one, um, it'll be specific to those teams. Uh, only, I mean, make sure you're clear on how to use Excel, et cetera, um, for both tests, editorial and the other one. Um, the editorial one will, of course, also have a written bit uh, to it. Uh, that's as much as I can let out. Uh, I think in either case, just come in knowing that what we're looking at is analytical ability. We don't want you to provide us with the information and leave it there because I can perform a Google search myself. What is the impact of what you're providing me with is what I need from you. Right. So if I just, I have a couple of follow-up questions to this. So regarding yes. what you said that you don't remit yourself to the courses. So does that mean, so I don't have an econ honors in my undergraduation. So I have an interdisciplinary yeah. regular arts degree. So would that be an impediment if I under, even though if I understand the economics background, I'm sorry, you said you have an interdisciplinary? I have an interdisciplinary undergraduate degree. I am not a postgraduate student. Ah, right, I okay. have an interdisciplinary one, which does include some okay. papers of economics. Okay. So would okay. that be an impediment so that works for me? Fine. Um, no, I don't think that should be an impediment. As I mentioned, we're not looking for a graduation or post-graduation in it. A diploma or a course, or perhaps maybe if you had it 12 in 12th would also work. Um, what I would do is um, there's a form that you fill out and I would mention it up top that this is what I have in terms of economics um, so that it's obvious to us that you do have certain macroeconomics, microeconomics under your belt before coming in. Okay, yeah. thank you, Shweta. And just one last question. What are the sources of the data that you use in your reports and in your assessments? Oh, so that can go on forever. Um, we... As I said, we have a lot of in-house models. So usually the source will always be the EIU because we are doing the analysis. I am tweaking my forecast according to my analysis. Um, however, of course, we use a lot of national sources from each country. Um, we have data tie-ups with certain countries. Um, we also uh, use certain other softwares like Haver. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. Um, and we do a lot with other news agencies as well. Okay, so, so primary research is something that you guys do. Uh, it is, but there's a difference there because as I said, the data scoping task will fall under the graduate data analyst facet of this program, at least. Um, so they would be doing most of that for someone like me who's working in editorial. So I get a workbook which already has all the data curated for me. And then I just need to tinker around with it to make it fit my analysis. All right. Thank you, Shweta. Thank you, Rishabh. Um, and just because this has been a recurrent um, topic, um, let me just clarify that for all of you. During the term during the term of your course at ISVP, there would be basic economics concepts covered. Um, so I don't think that should be a problem at all. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you need further information on how the modules look like or what else uh, is it that you're going to learn with us, please feel free to let us know and we can definitely share the information across. Um, Aprajita also would request uh, to keep your follow-up questions to probably two or three so that a lot of people can have a chance to interact with her. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Shweta. Am I audible? Hi. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Uh, hi, Shweta. Thank you for this wonderful presentation. So I have a question that uh, the 
there are two parts you said the data analysis part i have a question regarding that so uh, with data analysis uh, so we do uh, here in uh, eiu the data analysis tools that are being used those are that hardcore data analysis tool which are uh, like in general being used like power bi tableaus and everything so those are some of them um, the idea is to always uh, maintain high editorial quality uh, so the idea as i mentioned with uh, rishabh's question previously is that we have our in house models developed um and what i know is that certain languages will for it are preferred so python visual basic basic etc there's a lot of focus on advanced excel skills because the idea is for you to build up models within it as well um because we work via what we call a remote server um and a lot of the regression models etc that have been built are already sort of a part of our remote server excel workbooks so it will sound a lot more complicated to you now when i'm speaking about it but when you learn of it on the job um you sort of see a linkage between each market indicator country indicator and a trickle down effect um so i can actually uh, ask the economics unit to provide me with some more information about particular softwares but it's going to be a mixed bag of all of them okay and uh, the follow up question which i have to this is uh, like uh, for uh, for the whole thing uh, economics knowledge is required so if somebody is interested in the data analysis part so for that uh, data analysis or data science uh, courses are also required some background knowledge for that no no um for the economics unit and the eiu healthcare clear state verticals both of which fall under graduate data analyst uh we do want economics because that is the only way you'll be able to provide an analytical curated data sets which is why we need the basics to be clear for you we also provide economics training in house but the thing is there's only so much you can keep regurgitating while you're also trying to learn on the job uh which is why now this year we freshly made econ a hard call requirement um but because we function with our own models we develop things in house we don't expect you to come having these other data scientist type trainings under your belt that's not required okay okay thank you yeah. it just be yes okay i have three questions ma'am um the first one would be that i come from an engineering background so um i'm definitely good at quant and i have had some i mean i was always interested in economics so uh, i have some basic knowledge of economics but i don't have any extensive knowledge when it comes to in depth knowledge about say all the economic subjects like econometrics microeconomics macro economics but i'm good with numbers yeah. so for somebody like me um do i stand a chance despite not com coming from an engineering background and not from an economic background uh at getting uh, into either of the two roles because i i am also interested in reading and writing so i i would be interested in both the roles okay um to be quite frank i think uh, since you are interested in it first of we had somebody in the program this year as well uh, who came from an engineering background and that worked out really well for us um because like you they also had an, an inclination towards uh, economic training um I would brush up on basic concept of macroeconomics and microeconomics just the basics because it will help you perform in that test um this will become clear if you appear for the test um apologies for the noise behind me um this will become clear uh, when you see the test because if the basics are not clear you're not really going to be able to answer those questions uh and it's not that I'm going to be um questioning you on the basic principles of macroeconomics but if we provide you with a case study or a data set and ask you to provide an analysis for what you think is going on in this economy and why there is no other way that you will be able to do that yes, so whether you pick up a free course on the internet before appearing for sorry that wasn't me uh, am i audible yes ma'am you are audible okay. oh sorry um yeah so i i won't say that you need a specific uh to have had absolutely done a course in macroeconomics but you need the basic straight before you try to apply it to a test to even come to the interview stage 
So make sure you put in that effort somewhere. Uh, Mayuri just mentioned that I think your curriculum is covering some of the basics of it. So I think just brush that up before you appear for the test. Uh, my next question would be that I do plan after, say, after I get into EIU and work for three or four years, uh, I plan on going for a master's in public policy, preferably from abroad. So are there many people yep. in EIU who go abroad for higher studies or uh, the, peop the culture there is just continuing into the job, uh, workplace, workforce? Um, no, it's actually an incredibly open culture in that sense. We've had quite a few people go off for their master's and then come back. We've had quite a few people uh, study along with um, doing their job. I happen to be one of them right now. Uh, we have quite a few people shifting within different companies within the Economist group, and it's all appreciated and quite out in the open. So um, all the best to you with that. And if you join, we'd be very happy to help you out in whatever way we can in terms of just research recommendations, et cetera. Um, but it's very much encouraged for the study. Okay. My final question, I don't know if I'm actually allowed to ask this, but I'd still uh, take a stab at it. Um, what is the ballpark figure or the compensation that is offered in uh, both the roles? Yeah, that's actually not something I'd be able to get into right now. Uh, it differs as per teams. It's, of course, uniform consistent for the graduate program, but that's something we'll delve into when and if you come in for the interviews. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Kavya? Kavya, are you here? Yeah. 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 Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. Um, hi, Shweta. I hope you're having a good day. Um, my question is just sort of, so for the GRA role, do you prefer someone who sort of had experience in writing as well, or is that not something um, so... For example, does not having uh, a background in sort of writing or publishing any articles in the an application process as such? Um, no, that's not required. Uh, we will be testing that out thoroughly uh, when you come in for the tests um, or when you give them online this year. Um, we don't require you to come with publications. The whole point of forming a graduate program is that we know you're coming in pretty fresh faced um, from the academic world. So we don't expect you to already have all this in the background. Um, what we expect is performance during the test, and we expect to develop your skill when you join, um, because the EIU style is not something that you find elsewhere. It's very business writing oriented. Um, what we do expect is clear structure, ability to put your point through. Um, of course, basic grammar skill is expected, basic language and grammar skill. Um, but also, as I keep stressing, the idea of a business piece not being informative, but forward-looking and impact-driven, so that it provides something to some client reading it on the other side. It's not just something you would find in a newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Is that all? Before we move into more questions, if there are any, um, I would love it if you could also share your journey at EIU because um, just just how did you get started and how did you find yourself where you are right now? I think that would be absolutely inspirational for all of us, in fact, who are looking to kind of venture into the space. So if that's okay. Sure, share. sure yes, of course. Um, so I've been with the EIU for six years now. Um, I think like many people, I wasn't quite aware of the company's presence in the market um, because it was a really tiny team sitting in a Gurgaon office. Uh, when I joined, about 30 people, and it, really there were four of us when we joined. Um, myself come from actually the publishing world. I uh, used to work with history Hi, Shweta. So uh, we can't really quite hear you. Story. Can you hear me? Oh. So sorry, there's a... There seems uh, to be a wait, let me try switching off my camera. Is that better? Uh, yeah, it sounds better right now. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, you're audible right now. 
All right, sorry. Uh, so yeah, my given my own uh, background, which was heavily editorial with manuscripts, I was also editing manuscripts um, for economics books. Um, I got picked up for the job. As I keep stressing, the EIU is very open about testing people who don't come with just an economics background. Um, it can be editorial, it can be international relations, um, political science, etc. cetera. Um, the idea is if you are able to perform, they'll take you in. It's been an interesting journey for me. I joined with the industry team that I'm currently managing right now. Um, but at the time I had joined as a deputy uh, industry editor, after which it went on to lead industry editor where I was for about two, three years. Uh, after which we increased the team and then it was head of industry reports at which point all the industries were sort of coming under my uh, purview and it was about a lot of operational strategy product development based tasks in addition to of course editing your reports writing your pieces appearing for media appearances um, and uh, working with our economist summit which takes place every year of course it was virtual over the past year um, from there we realized that we need to work more collaboratively because the gurgaon office also started growing and we now have over here sitting with us under the eiu banner country analysis um, industry briefing our library subscriptions team um, but we also have a huge events team, a media business team, uh, our public policy team, which uh, sits under our client solutions banner, which is also um, the economist group, just under a new banner now. Um, and we also have a large sales and finance team over here. Um, we started the graduate program in 2019 because of the scope and breadth that we could see across our office now. The idea being that we didn't want to come to recruitment and then hire people because this is who's available and I'm going to go with it and try and train them up. We realized that if we actually invest in the people that we're hiring, give them a year to broaden their horizons, understand what the products are, um, it would be a good opportunity for them and for us managers uh, and the directors above me because there's a clearer understanding when you join the product that you join from your side and from us because we then understand what you what your capabilities are and what your wants and needs are where you're headed what you want to learn but also what you can provide to the business it's not something that i had when i joined it didn't exist so i'm quite proud of the fact that it's available there for you lot um and so far yeah that's been my journey six six years into the company Thank you so much for sharing that, Shweta. It's always, always so lovely to listen to you talk about your journey. Um, we have um, two more people who have questions. Um, Tejasvi and Adiraj. Adiraj, why don't you go first? Um, yeah. Uh, hi, Shweta. Am I audible? Hi. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I uh, just wanted to uh, focus in on the on the GRA vertical just for a little bit. And I just wanted to ask... Um, uh, what sort of, because you obviously mentioned that there are specific um, in-house and just general data analysis tools that you utilize uh, when talking about the GDA, but for the GRA, uh, yeah. you obviously mentioned that uh, advanced Excel skills are required, but are there any more specific um, data-oriented skills that you require for the GRA in addition to being able to sort of um, you know, write and produce content? Um, so yes, but it's not about the tools that you're using or, um, you know, it's not about learning a specific digital language in that sense. Um, it's very much about the analysis you're able to provide, uh, which is why the focus is coming back again and again to the economics bit, because you're not going to be able to craft a report, produce an analysis, assess a risk. Um, if you're not able to perform basic data scoping tasks. Now, what I mean by that is not um, inputting data into a model. It's also to go to a national source, find a certain data set. Maybe it looks completely off as compared to what uh, the economics team has provided to you this month. You should be able to question why. You should be able to provide an analysis. Uh, we will provide you with a set of definitions for our models and indicators. You should be able to analyze that accordingly. You should be able to collaborate and question the economics team up front about what they've provided. Why has this come in? 
what sources are you missing for example why is it that a national source is showing me more consumer expenditure percentage over a certain period of time however the economist data is showing me a lot less that's the kind of analytical skill i require i don't require you to know how to input data into a what we call a workbook for the research analyst bit okay all right thanks thanks so thanks much yeah. hey just yes uh uh shweta ma'am i'd like to ask another question uh, uh quite a number of public policy jobs tend to have a field based component so uh, you mentioned about uh, starting a journey in a small office in gurgaon so what i wanted to ask is that in, uh, is the work in eiu solely going to be that of uh, an office based one or is there a field based component too and if it's an office based one uh, is there only one office that is only in the ncr gurgaon to be specific or are there uh, other offices too throughout the country okay uh, so you mentioned throughout the country so my answer changes a little bit um we do tend to have a lot of in house client meetings etc uh, i don't think locally there is as much travel we have one other office here in new delhi which is the economist journalists um sitting there five of them um but that's not very related to public policy as such um the job is very in house even with public policy and given the pandemic we've actually even become more remote with it previously there would be some international travel along with it but that comes after you've reached a certain stage um but other than that frankly a lot of it is remote now and online so there isn't a lot of traveling individually involved for it okay and um, uh, about the second part of my question i mean uh, is are there only two offices one uh, one in gurgaon and the other in delhi or in other parts of india too that was my second part uh, those are the only two uh, no. it's just gurgaon is the actually the economist intelligence unit office and new delhi is the economist newspaper office thank you ma'am thank you so much shweta um it's it's just very it's making us a little nostalgic um my team and i were talking because um 3 years back and this is the third batch who is having the session with you you were our first partner the first recruiters to hire from us when we had just started out um and it's just so fabulous to have you here to have this discussion and the session with the new scholars i mean i think even in this batch the scholars kept waiting to um is get a chance to interact with you to have the opportunity to come and work at EIU so um thank you so much for all that you have been um doing so far and for giving the scholars the opportunity to even interact with you this has been fantastic um if that's okay would it be possible for us to click a picture with all the scholars and you in it yes sure thank you for having me again i'll just switch my camera on and it's it's always great interacting with everyone here um and if i may say so just all the best and i look forward to seeing as many of you possible for the interviews follow us may request you turn your camera on please yes sir one more thank you very much shweta um thank this you. is fabulous um we hope to see you soon again and i'm sure you're always going to come and inspire the scholars as you do for the team as well it's always very very inspiring to have you with us um thank you everyone for joining in i'll see you again tomorrow um we have a session with janagra at 3 pm tomorrow thank you so much thank you shweta and pleasant evening thank you Thank you. Bye.